Today I'm going to be talking about my top 10 most anticipated shows of 2021. Coming in at number 10, we have What If, which is the new animated Marvel TV show that's going to be exploring sort of alternate timelines of what could have happened if things had gone just a bit differently in the MCU, such as I know, I believe the first episode is going to be focusing on what would have happened if Haley Atwell's character from the first Captain America movie, Peggy Carter, ended up taking the super soldier serum instead of Steve Rogers. And I think she, the idea is she becomes Captain Britain instead of him becoming Captain America. So I think this will be a really fun series. I don't think it's going to have much impact on the MCU, which is why it's not as high as a few other Marvel related shows. I think it'll nonetheless be fun and it's the first animated really property in the MCU so far so that that's going to be really exciting and the entire voice cast from all the MCU basically is returning even the likes of Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans I believe who are otherwise as far as we know for now done with the MCU. So that things like that lended a lot of credibility so I'm very excited to see how it goes and the general animation look has sort of it's animated but still looks like the actors basically and uh, it's sort of a 3d cell shaded look so i think it could be a lot of fun and i'm really looking forward to it but not as much as the rest of my list at number nine we have the witcher so season two of the witcher to be specific and this is one I'll admit for now it makes the list, but we don't know exactly that it's really going to come out this year just because of, um, it may have been, I think it was delayed pretty heavily because of the state of things right now. But, um, for now it's slated to come out this year, so it makes the list. And if, if I knew it was coming out this year, it honestly might be a bit higher because I, um, am quite excited for season two. I was... I enjoyed season one. I wasn't the biggest fan of it, but I thought it was a lot of fun. And if you saw my last video, you know, and from my Funko Pop collection, you know, I'm a massive Game of Thrones fan. And I, I think I've had, I think everyone who's a fan of that show has had sort of a, a, an emptiness in them since it's ended. So I, I don't, do I think The Witcher is as good as Game of Thrones? No, not, not even close, but I do think it, it sort of occupies the same space specifically because it's another sort of very adult uh, dark fantasy kind of world. And um, I think there's potential to maybe if uh, um, in the future seasons that it could grow into something closer to Game of Thrones. I won't say as good, but closer. And I think... I'm, uh, I still need to play the game. I actually have that pre-ordered, um, but I've heard that's an amazing game, so I'm excited to really kind of dive into the Witcher lore and maybe at some point read the books too, as I did for Game of Thrones. Um, so for now, The Witcher comes in, The Witcher Season 2 comes in at number 9. And at number 8, we have another MCU show. Just a spoiler alert, there's there's going to be a couple of those in here. It's just, this is just honestly the ones I'm most excited for. Um, so at number eight, we have Miss Marvel. And I don't know a whole lot about this one, but like a lot of these upcoming Disney Plus um, TV shows, what's really exciting is now we know these are no longer just shows that are going to just sort of technically be called in the MCU but not really feel like they are like like shows like Agents of Shield or even all the Netflix shows. They had very little actual ties to the MCU and though some of them were good shows, it's nice that we're finally going to get shows that are actually important to to the movies and I think as far as I know they'll they'll be actually like just as crucial to watch if you want to keep up with the MCU to follow what's going on as the upcoming movies are and they will tie in directly like for example with miss marvel the actress who's playing miss marvel who i believe is a an unknown like a uh, very young actress who um i don't i don't think she's been in anything before this um but we do know that she's actually going to be appearing in 
in the second Captain Marvel movie. Because I, I do know what I, little do I do know about Miss Marvel is she's, I mean, similar to like Spider Man, she's like a teenager and she is sort of uh, not as experienced at the whole superhero thing, but. But she's sort of thrown into it when she gets her powers, and I think in the way that um, in the MCU they sort of paired um, Tom Holland Spider-Man with uh, Iron Man as sort of a mentor, I think they're going to do the same thing with uh, Miss Marvel pairing her with Brie Larson's Captain Marvel, because she is the actress playing uh, Miss Marvel in the show is actually already confirmed to be coming or to be starring in Captain Marvel 2, which I believe is slated for 2022 for now. So so not knowing too much about the character, other than a few things, which I actually mostly learned from the new Avengers video game, it keeps it from being higher on the list. But nonetheless, knowing that it's going to tie directly into the MCU has me excited. Number seven, we have The Bad Batch which is a new animated Star Wars show that's going to be done in the same style as the previous animated Star Wars shows, Star Wars Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels, and which I actually just finished sort of uh, watching through for the first time, both of them um, just last year. And uh, they're, they're, yeah, they're surprisingly, uh, they surprised me just how great they were, at least when they were, at least when they were um, at their peak. But, um, so I don't know too much about really what this one's going to be about, other than it's a, about a group of storm or, uh, clone troopers from the last season of Star Wars Clone Wars that are nicknamed the Bad Batch. So I doubt this one will be as long or as epic of a series as either Clone Wars or Rebels, but I'm still nonetheless excited, especially now that I'm actually caught up on their animated sort of, um, content and I actually can just jump in and not feel lost or anything so star wars the bad batch comes in at number seven coming in at number six we have what most people probably don't even really consider a movie i thought about putting on my most anticipated movies of the year list but at the end of the day i think now it is on imdb it's listed as a mini series which is what a lot of the other shows on this list are listed as so i thought it ultimately made sense to include it on this list instead of movies and that is Zack Snyder's Justice League, which was also formerly known as the Snyder Cut before it was an official thing. So this is obviously a really interesting thing for anyone who's into comic book movies or even even if you're just into movies in general. Even, even if you hate Zack Snyder um, or DC movies or whatever, just the fact that this movie exists is very fascinating because basically what happened is the original, for those who don't know, the original Justice League movie came out in 2017, but it was sort of hacked apart by the studio, basically the similar case to what happened with Suicide Squad, but even a bit different because Zack Snyder had to drop out of the project partway through after doing a lot of it and due to a personal tragedy. And then they got Joss Whedon, who done the first two Avengers movies for Marvel to come and sort of finish filming the movie and rework it. And though Joss Whedon, I think, is a great director and the Avengers movies are phenomenal, I think I think it's pretty clear that he wasn't really the right guy to take over for someone like Zack Snyder just because they're almost polar opposites the way they approach the comic book movie. So... It's uh, it's just sort of, it just doesn't quite feel right that movie, and um, and it's also very short, and the studio mandated that it can only be two hours long, and now we're finding out that this Snyder cut, the reason it's turned into a mini series, is because it's about, I've heard about five hours long, it could be, not completely right on that, but it's long, so it's now a four-part mini series coming to HBO Max, and uh, hopefully we can get it. Right when it comes out somehow in Canada, even if I have to pay for it, like Wonder Woman 1984. Um, so I'm definitely very excited. I can't, like, just from the trailer, but it looks like a completely different movie. I mean, the dark side is the villain in it, that he wasn't even in the first Justice League movie. So I think it's a completely different movie. And I think I, along with most people who are 
fans of this sort of thing are very curious just uh, as what to implications this will even have on DC movies moving forward. Like, which version of Justice League are they going to reference in the future? Hopefully this one, because I think, honestly, I think anything would be better than the previous one, because uh, it's one of the few DCU movies I really don't like, along with Suicide Squad. And so, yeah, so it, and the reason I think it, I almost thought this should even, if this is on the show list, it should be higher, but I think just with what is coming out this year, though, I, and though this is mostly going to be new, I think I'm just a bit more excited for the stuff that's going to be completely new, whereas this is still kind of retreading some ground we've already been over before. That being said, it falls right in the middle of my list, basically. So now we're moving into the top five. So at number five, we have another Disney Plus, another Star Wars show, and that is The Book of Boba Fett. So I'm going to say minor spoilers for Mandalorian Season 2 if you haven't seen it yet, but to talk about this, basically, you have to know that in The Mandalorian Season 2, they reintroduced the character Boba Fett, who... Uh, was believed to be dead in the previous, uh, in, in the original Star Wars trilogy. And I've never a hundred percent been on board with just, uh, how much people are in love with this character. But nonetheless, I think they brought him back in this show. So he's alive now officially. And I think what they did with him actually did make him a better character than than what he was in the original trilogy. So I am looking forward to what is now the spin-off of The Mandalorian, The Book of Boba Fett, which um, we don't know for sure if it's going to be a mini series or a full series yet, but it's slated to come out in December of this year, I believe before The Mandalorian Season 3. So I'm definitely curious, um, based on how much I've enjoyed The Mandalorian, um, just how, how this will sort of... Uh, take things from there. Coming in at number four, we have the Marvel Disney Plus show Hawkeye. So Hawkeye is going to be starring Jeremy Renner, who plays Hawkeye in the MCU. So automatically, like this is exciting. It's it's one of the main Avengers getting his own TV show, being played by the same actor. And I don't really know too much what the plot's going to be about, but th this is sort of the stuff I've been waiting for. I mean, in terms of since Disney Plus has come out, all we've really gotten is the Mandalorian in terms of their like prestige sort of projects and uh so this is among a few other Marvel projects that are coming out this year that really is just exciting just because of what it is on paper and hopefully it can live up to that. So coming in at number three we have another Marvel Disney Plus show and that is The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So like Hawkeye this is going to be starring major actors from the MCU. It's going to be starring Sebastian Stan as um, Bucky Barnes, aka the Winter Soldier, and it's going to be starring Anthony Mackie as Sam Wilson, aka Falcon, who, spoiler alerts for Avengers Endgame, but last time I checked, the end of Avengers Endgame, he was made the new Captain America, so I'm not sure, is he, is he, does he just still call himself Falcon, or is he, or is he Captain America now? According to the title, it seems like he's still Falcon. But I'm very curious to see how that plays out. And I think this one thing that's really exciting too about it is I know that um, the actor who played Zemo, the villain in Captain America: Civil War, is returning. I believe probably is the villain in this as well. And um, so that's exciting too. We've got like sort of a hanging thread of the one-off villain from one of these MCU movies now is actually coming back and still being relevant so that's exciting to see what will happen with him and I think just inherently this will be kind of a cool sort of it'll be I think probably the closest thing we've gotten in the MCU to the second Captain America movie the Winter Soldier since and that uh that sounds like a lot of fun to me so coming in at number two is Loki. So yes, you can probably see where this list is going, but number two is Loki, another Marvel and um, Disney Plus show. And once again, we have Tom Hiddleston, 
coming back from the movies, who's really, in many ways, the best or most iconic villain in the MCU, outside of Thanos. And basically, once again, spoilers for Avengers Endgame. There's a lot of that in my video so far, for spoilers for that movie. But um, with uh, Loki coming back, basically, this isn't the same Loki who died in Avengers Infinity War. This is actually the Loki who um, was able to get a hold of the Tesseract in Avengers Endgame when they went back in time to the first Avengers movie. And he sort of used it, the Tesseract being the Space Stone, he used it to sort of teleport out of there. And the trailer for this shows him waking up, or it shows directly after that scene where he went, and he's in some desert. And it sort of looks almost, I mean, very different from Falcon and the Winter Soldier, but even it, like that show, sort of has almost a James Bond kind of vibe to it, but, but mixed with a sort of fantasy sci-fi element. And... This this almost dare I say number one also looks pretty crazy, but this this uh this looks like it could be the wildest thing the MCU's done so far. And Tom Hiddleston is fantastic in the role, and he's a very complex character, Loki. So I, despite it being slightly frustrating that they're bringing him back from the dead, in a sense yet again, the trailer looks really fun and exciting. So I'm very excited for Loki and. That's why it comes in at number two. And number one, yeah, it's another Marvel Disney Plus show. And uh, if you know all the ones coming out this year, you probably already figured this out, what's at number one. And some people are surprisingly mixed on this, or surprising to me. But um, easily number one for me this year, based on what's coming out, is um, WandaVision. So WandaVision is actually, I think, the first show to come out of all of these on my list, actually. It comes out um, January 15th, I believe, so that's quite soon. Um, and I'm, <clears throat> everything I see about this, I don't really understand what's going on exactly, but I'm, I'm really excited to see what happens in this show. I think uh, Scarlet Witch is one of my favorite characters in the MCU, probably... Probably my favorite one who hasn't had their own solo movie thus far. So this, basically her along with Hawkeye and the, um, the Winter Soldier and stuff, these shows are basically going to be, I think, mini series that are long movies. So they're going to have, each for the season, they're going to have like a movie level production value. So that, this is basically going to be the Scarlet Witch and Vision movie. And that's just uh, super exciting to me. I think this is... Probably even more so than Loki, I think this is going to be the weirdest the MCU gets for a while. Because all we know about it is that somehow Wanda and Vision, who once again, spoilers for Avengers Infinity War, Vision is dead. He was not brought back in Avengers Endgame. So somehow he's here. So it seems pretty likely that he is somehow a figment of Wanda's mind or something. And probably he's not going to be sticking around after the show is over so this sort of feels like an epilogue to their relationship which has been a surprisingly sort of sweet and moving relationship within the mcu and the his death scene in infinity war might be just the most emotional and dare i say maybe maybe my favorite scene in the entire mcu so so uh, i don't think the mcu has gotten much more dramatic than that and um, somehow they've, they've, it seems like they've woken up and it's going to be paying homage in like in the sitcom world and going through all the different eras from I Love Lucy, like the black and white ones, all the way to shows like The Office and Modern Family. So it just sounds so bizarre that I'm just absolutely fascinated and I, I want to know how it ties into the greater MCU, and apparently this is going to tie directly into the next Doctor Strange movie, which is Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. So, and uh, Wanda, Wanda Maximoff, aka Scarlet Witch, is going to be appearing in that movie. So once again, like the other MCU Disney Plus shows on this list, it's going to be tying directly into the movie, and it's going to be crucial, hopefully, to understanding what's going on in the movies now. So I'm just... I'm just absolutely, I'm just so eager to see the show, and I'm 
I'm thinking maybe that might be something I do in the next little while is possibly review some of the episodes each week of that show as they come out and uh I think that could be a lot of fun so with that said that is my most anticipated top 10 most anticipated shows of 2021 and thank you for watching and take care and I hope to see you back if uh if you uh enjoyed this video I'd appreciate it if you liked it and if you want to see what I do next like I said um uh, feel free to subscribe and I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care.